Hello, this is Joyce Latimer from Virginia Tech, and we're going to talk today about which plant growth regulator application method you should use. And we're going to use an example crop of Rebecca Goldster. Now there have been some videos out on how to do appropriate sprays, appropriate drenches and liner soaks, how to get the best results for your, your efforts. But how do you decide which one of those to use, assuming they all work? Well, we're going to talk about the application methods available for soil active PGRs. Soil active PGRs are those that can be taken up by the root tissue. And today we're actually going to be talking about concise or uniconazole. And for our Rudbeckia trials, we actually are using foliar sprays, substrate drenches, and liner soaks. So for this particular study, we actually had two experiments running concurrently using the same batch of liners that we purchased from Aris Horticulture. So in the first study we were comparing a spray versus a drench application of concise and in this case the treatment was applied one week after the liners were transplanted into quart pots. We used four spray rates and a control at the label recommended volume and we used drench rates four plus a control at two fluid ounces per pot and we measured the growth every two weeks until the plants flowered. The second study was actually looking at different liner soak rates and so the concise was applied the day before we transplanted the plants into the quart pots. Liner soak rates were up to five parts per million using dry, in other words ready for irrigation liners and they were soaked for two minutes and again we measured growth every two weeks until flowering. So what you're going to see as we go through here all of our sprays and drenches were applied one week after planting and we are, our measurements were at two week intervals. So as we took our pictures and our data they are going to be one week younger than the liner soaks which we planted the day after treatment. So our weeks after treatment and our weeks after planting are the same. So just to let you know the liner soak plants in the photos are one week older than those pictured in the spray and drenches. So let's look at the treatment effects. Our foliar sprays, now what I've done here is try to match up the size of the pots so that you can see the growth over this time frame. And our treatments were a control, a zero control, a 15, 30, 45, and 60 part per million foliar sprays. And you can see that Rebecca Goldstrom is very responsive to foliar sprays of concise. And you can see the type of growth control we have with increasing rates. And you can see the kind of flowering. You see the tightness we have in some of these plants even as we get into flowering. So let's compare that to the substrate drench. Now the rates we were using were pretty low, 0.5 up to 2 parts per million at 2 fluid ounces per pot. And you can see we did not have very much growth control, particularly early on. But what you will see as we get into flowering, we have a little more growth control in the end stage. Obviously this would be, should be, a starting rate for these applications as far as a test rate. We probably would see better control if we went a little higher. But on the other hand, that's a pretty nice looking plant. So what about the liner soaks? Again, these pictures are one week older than those you saw with the substrate drenches or the spray. At 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 parts per million, a 2 minute liner soak. You can see that they were very, very affected by the concise treatment. This held all the way through the 10 weeks after planting and when the plants, the control plants and the 1 part per million were fully flowered out, the ones treated with two parts per million flowered about the same time as our controls, but there was a delay in those treated with higher rates of the liner soap. So what if we look at these together? Which one would you choose? Which one would you like to be marketing? And how long would you wait for a more marketable plant? Personally, this is my favorite. I just really like the way all those leaves are on the bottom of the plant and those flowers stand up above it. But maybe this one's going to be better. If you give it another week, what's it going to look like? Or maybe it's this one. You know, maybe when that flowers out, it's going to be the perfect size. Remember, these are in quart pots. 
So which one do you choose? It all comes down to your situation, your market, your production, your ideal, what your market ideal is for your customers. So you really do need to run your own trials, especially when you talk about problem crops. Now, Rebecca is not a problem crop. It's just a nice example. But for your problem crops, you really need to look at these different methods of application. Test a few of them. Test a few different rates at each one of those methods of application. And evaluate them. Evaluate them at the time you would ship them out the door. Then hold them for another week or two and see what they look like after they've been on the shelf for a week. Which one is best? For your production schedule, you're going to have to decide what meets the preferences of your market. So choose the right PGR application method for yourself. And I know you're going to be constrained by production issues, but when you have the choice, or especially if you have a problem crop, take the time to test it and see what would work best if you had the time or made the time and took the effort to make a quality crop. Thanks again to Fine Americas for sponsoring the research and the video. Have a great day.